Attorney General Merrick Garland, the notion of this inherent contempt. Um, first of all, it, it's my understanding that it requires the same amount of votes as it did the first time around to hold him in contempt. And if that's true, will the vote pass? And second of all, for all the times I've been up to the U.S. Capitol, I've never seen any type of room that could serve as a detainment chamber. How exactly would that work? I have no idea how that will work. I know we've got uh, several members of our conference that, that want to do that. Look, I want to hold him in contempt. Uh, I've seen some some of my colleagues do interviews that say they're going to have the sergeant at arms arrest him. And other, I, I don't even know, honestly, who the sergeant at arms is. And uh, look, the, the, the Capitol Police, and you know, I, I don't know what the exact role is. Uh, we just found out this week through a statement. Uh, I read it on the news before I received the letter that said that the Department of Justice had decided they weren't going to prosecute Merrick Garland. They were just going to turn a blind eye because, again, they, uh, you know, Congress is just a pothole in the in the road of of corruption that uh, that this administration continues to travel on. But at the end of the day, I think that uh, there's a lot of desire uh, in Congress to to hold Merrick Garland accountable, and I think we're going to try to uh, do Plan B, C, and D, whatever we can do. Uh, to try to hold him accountable. At the end of the day, the American people are going to have the opportunity to hold this administration accountable, not just because of their uh, policy failures, but because of the public corruption at the highest levels, not just by the Biden family, but also in the Department of Justice.